It's currently 1 a.m. when I'm recording this voiceover. And why I'm doing that? Well, we got our first fail on these reviews. This is episode 4 of this review season 2, and today we're taking a look at Deepin 20.1. And this is a very interesting review because it's actually the first one that failed, as I said earlier. So let's start by looking at the package manager and the app store. The app store, I can't say that it's not interesting. It's actually pretty good. But there's one really big problem. Everything is in Chinese. Now I know that Deepin is a Chinese project and the whole thing with UOS, but when you select English as the main language of your operating system, you want everything to be consistent. And this is basically the exact opposite of that. The distro itself is based on Debian. Debian Buster if you want the 5.4 kernel, and Debian Pulsai if you want the 5.8 kernel. It uses APT, but when you install an app through the App Store, it doesn't require you to enter your root password or your pseudo password. Why is that? I don't know, when I try to do this through the terminal, it requires one. And now that I'm talking about the terminal, it actually has a really good terminal. The themes are super nice, and the actual terminal is awesome. And now, let's talk about NeoFetch. On NeoFetch we can see the weird dipping logo, it reminds me of Peppermint, which reminds me of the Umbrella Corporation, but this is like with less spirals and stuff, but anyway. We can see that the OS is indeed deep in 20.1. We can see our kernel, which is 5.8.14 AMD64 desktop kernel. Not sure what that means. It has 1738 packages by default and it uses bash 5.0.3. It uses Deepin with Kwin. The theme is Deepin or Deepin Dark and the icons are Bloom. On DF, we can see that the distro uses 7.5 GB on a clean install and free reports that it's using 2.0 GB of RAM. That's actually pretty heavy. HTOP reports the same with 105 tasks and 631 threads. Three of them are running. Also, look at these transitions. Now let's talk about Flatpak support. So Flatpak is not installed by default. If you try to install this, you will do sudo apt install Flatpak, then add the Flathub repository, and then install some themes, which took a ridiculously long time to install, but afterwards Flatpak won't really do anything with the software center, so he'll have to install everything through the terminal. App images work fine out of the box, and snaps you have to install them, but afterwards no connection to the software center. As I said earlier, the kernel is the 5.8 series, and the application should be up to date, but not for long, since Debian Bullseye will get feature freeze soon. The installer prompted me to install the NVIDIA proprietary cloud source drivers, and that's awesome, but afterwards it didn't install the actual NVIDIA settings package, which is okay I guess, so when I tried to install it, it actually gave me a warning about Plymouth, saying that there are some missing themes, but I installed Plymouth themes package, and it automatically solved. Oh, the driver version is 450.66 by the way. And now, our last category, gaming. So. It's a Debian based distro, it will support Steam just fine, and hopefully Proton, I didn't really test it out, but Steam support is there. What I want to do is try Wine, and I actually want to try a new game that I found on GOG Galaxy, which you can only get on Linux through Wine. So I tried installing Lutris, which normally would automatically install Wine. This time it didn't, so when I actually realized this, I cancelled the operation and went to install Wine the normal way. After adding all the keys that it needed, it gave me an error saying that the dip command is not recognized. And I'm like, okay, maybe it used the Ubuntu command. So I went to the Ubuntu one, and I did the sudo adapt repository. Well, again, command not recognized. And so the conclusion is that you can't install Wine. It's not available on the software center, and it's just not available. You cannot get Wine on here. So that means that no gaming except for the Steam games which, eh, okay, I guess that's good. So here's when the distro failed. You cannot install Wine. And now you're gonna say that, hey, you don't really play games, so why do you complain about it? Well, firstly, 
Even if I don't play games, I want to know that my distribution can actually handle them. So, right now, I'm not playing, but I have games installed, and I have the launchers installed. Why? Because I want to know that, hey, if I want to play, I can. And also, Wine is not only used for games, you can also use it for Windows applications. And the problem is not only with Wine, if you want to install OBS Studio, you can't, because you have to do sudo add app repository, and most of the software is not available on the software center. And show that alongside with a super super unstable desktop that has really poor customization options. And that the localization is garbage means that this distro failed the distro reviews checklist. And so she isn't failed, I don't really have to give a score to, uh, to it. So I won't. But if I had it would probably be around the 4, maybe 3 mark. But anyway, tell me what you think about the distro. Was it too harsh? Probably not. Do you want me to make the checklist bigger? Then just go to gitlab, gitlab.com slash papasfilms and then you can open an issue to request new episodes with different distros or to expand the checklist. I will also leave the link to a Google form down in the description to change my content. And that was it. I hope that you really enjoyed it. Happy New Year!